Hi there, and welcome to Talks on Tuesday, where we meet every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time to talk on a variety of spiritual issues and metaphysical issues and ask questions or make comments. And if you're joining us later on Zoom, please like us and share us, subscribe, make comments. We love everything. So thank you so much. And today, um, it's my turn. So I thought we would talk about the challenges and opportunities of living a spiritual life. And I was saying to Julie and Barb earlier that sometimes the challenges seem a lot more pressing than the opportunities, even though the opportunities are numerous and rich. Um, a lot of times, you know, just becoming aware of your own judgment and judgmental tendencies um, is a huge, huge um, challenge. And um, I had no idea that I was so judgy until I started trying not to be. And that was a huge challenge. And um, being aware all the time. And it's um, Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who was talking about the spiritual life that once you decide to live it, your life changes entirely. And it takes a lot of courage to continue with it. Um, people who liked you before, maybe don't like you as much once you've decided to be spiritual. And um, they think you're a little weird. And I think that's what stops a lot of people on that path is the isolation and um, the loneliness sometimes of a spiritual life. And, you know, the there is a segue between feeling lonely and realizing that what you have is solitude, um, which is really a, a welcome experience too. So I'm just going to throw it out to you. Um, what do you think about this topic? Um, okay, you guys are going to make me talk. Uh, <laughs> before we 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 got on with you, um, beautiful people, we were talking a little bit about it, and and I'll just share a little bit about what I was saying, which <clears throat> kind of uh, parallels what Mary was saying about judgment and how I how I do find myself in that judgy space more times than I would like. But the fact that I'm aware of it now is, is a big step. Um, and, and it's not just that for, you know, living a spiritual life. It's, it's other things for me as well. Like somebody's at the door. Darn. Um, it's, it's like, for me, I, I meditating, you know, I want to meditating or even just, you know, bringing myself to that place where I'm, I'm sitting in the, in, in the energy, the frequencies, uh, instead of forgetting about it completely, just yeah, th those kind of things, um, and bring myself back to what it means to me to be spiritual oh my god somebody take over i gotta somebody's ringing the doorbell okay <laughs> the it's angels okay. are calling okay. you ringing the doorbell yes. <laughs> well welcome colleen glad that yes, you could join nice us you. yeah I'll, i guess Hi. i'll jump in you know a lot of times i think especially over the last number of years since i've been so involved with reconnective healing and the rlc I find that that for me it's a lot easier to live um, with that knowing of being connected. But last week I kind of lost it a little bit. I got some bad news early in the week, and then I just kept hearing more bad news on top of more bad news. And I would try to kind of get recentered and do it do it for a while, but then I just I felt like I was off off balance, and. Um, I was having a conversation with my husband one day 
and I was reading an article about Chernobyl, the uh, um, nuclear power plant in Ukraine that, that had that big meltdown. And the article I was reading was about how the wolves that were roaming around Chernobyl, they did research and found that they um, became immune. They developed an immunity to radiation caused cancer. And so that was kind of fascinating. And Dean and I were talking about it. And then we commented on how that event happened 35 years ago, which was for me like a half a lifetime ago. And then we start talking about that, you know, just the time and what it felt like. And I said to him kind of jokingly, oh, does that make you feel old? And as soon as I said that, I realized, no, I'm not old. I am exactly the same, this, this center being of me. And I got this image of like an eye beam. I felt like this is my I am. And I got this image of like this eye beam that's used like in construction of buildings. It's like the core center. And that is always the same. And I had this knowingness of that. You know, I mean, experiences happen and time kind of comes and goes, but this me is everlasting and, and it's like yeah that brought me back to kind of that space of that knowing and um kind of pulled me back into being where i frequently am you know just kind of that that more relaxed knowing this so i was grateful for that i was really grateful that, that i had that experience and, and that situation that's beautiful barb Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess when I heard you talking about a meltdown, I'm thinking that this world we live in has meltdowns all around us all the time, whether it's political or social or geographic. And eventually, um, we become immune um, to them. Uh, one way or another, we, we either learn not to pay attention to it, um, like, oh, I'm not going to watch the news anymore. Or we realize that this is the place where souls go to school. And of course, there are going to be troubles around us or we wouldn't be learning anything. And I used to tell my students that, you know, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not learning anything. And um, I think that's very true for this planet. And when you begin to live this spiritual life, you see more and more that daily life is full of opportunities for learning. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to get angry, discard them. And sometimes I get angry still, as my friends know. But um, I, I think living a spiritual life is like wearing a, a new set of lenses that yeah. allow you to see in a different way. That was a very good way to put it. Mary, it's a new set of lenses. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And I've been reading Rupert Spira's new book, or I don't know if it's new for him, but it's new for me, The Art of Peace and Happiness. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a reminder that, yeah, everything that we experience is just that, an experience. And it, again, it just kind of comes and goes. And um it feels very real while while we're immersed in it and so it's so easy to get caught up in that and and hang on to those troubles that you mentioned you know with the everything going on around us but i also am able more able to step back and think there's always been troubles you know all history is kind of like a story of troubles and that's okay because where i want to be and where i can choose to be is you know kind of like this I beam center that I envisioned and and uh, remember that it is that's not all real, but but my essence really is you know the reality. Um, I just was thinking that when you're talking about current events or something going on in the world that's troubling, uh, that it comes down to also being able to be aware that you can change your perception. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have a, a client in LA, an ex-client, and she 
she lets allows herself to get so upset about you know what's the current events that's that are going on just i mean she it would ruin her day things you know and that's a very that's an extreme example but she, like you said barbara a choice you know she had a choice to look at it in a different way um and i don't know how many people are out there that are like that but i i think that when you start looking down a different path in your life you know, if you want to call it a more spiritual path more more awareness you know you can come to those um conclusions um that help you live in in this life of chaos <laughs> well i think about all the times that I upset myself over everything that had nothing to do with me, that I could not control, that I didn't cause. And now I realize how precious every day is. How do I want to, uh, how do I want to see this opportunity? Do I wanna focus on everything that's going wrong? Do I wanna focus on how people around me are behaving? in a way which might displease me or something might be happening that I'm not so happy about. Like this morning, I had to take the bus. I had a grocery bag on wheels. I waited 20 minutes for the bus. It's like minus 11 outside, super cold. Finally, the bus gets there. It's so, cram it's so crammed with people that human beings, you know, were like being in a cattle car. And I commented to the driver, and we didn't go on very long and someone had to get off. So I had to get off. And then I finally decided I'm going to stay off and I'm going to wait until another bus comes, which is likely going to have less people in it. And I'll be more comfortable and I won't have to feel like a, a sardine. And that's exactly what I did. And it was still minus 11 outside and I still had to wait, but I made a choice. I thought I can't change the fact that the way they coordinate the transit in our city is less than, well, less than acceptable, put it that way. I can't change that. I can't change the fact that it's minus 11 outside and not very comfortable to be waiting outside, but I can get off the bus and get on a different one. And that's exactly what I did. I'm going to just have a great day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. I think that's great. I think a lot of people don't realize that they have that opportunity to, to have a choice, to make a choice. I wonder why that is or what, what, how, oh, go ahead, Mayor. I, it, it's a way of seeing, I mean, we decide how we're going to see things. And if you forget to put on the lenses of, you know, this spiritual life, or if you've, you know, you decide it's too much trouble or whatever, you see things the old way. Um, that's that's maybe simplistic, but um, I think all metaphors fall apart eventually. Um, I think my my challenge recently in the last couple of years has been, oh, who am I? You know, what is my purpose? You know, I'm not teaching anymore. I'm not a wife anymore. I'm not a caregiver anymore. Um, I'm not working what is my purpose? And it finally came to me the other day. Uh, your purpose may change minute to minute, Mary. It could be my purpose is raising the consciousness of the world by being spiritual. Um, and we don't see the results of that immediately. But um, that, it, that lens gave me a way of looking at my life is not useless, but maybe the most important thing there is is living the spiritual life. I think that a lot of people, we say, why don't they realize that? They uh, they don't open the door or they don't walk through the door. The door is yeah. open. You know what I mean? Um, you know, because we talk about that on uh, Solomon Speaks, you know, you can open the door for them, but they need to walk through. Hello there. Speaking of which, 
<laughs> yeah. Colleen, you've been looking like you had something to say. I do have something to say. <laughs> I think one of the challenges, well, I know that one of the challenges I have is explaining the supernatural abilities, gifts that I have mm -hmm. and that I see in other beyond this physical world. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and it, it's a challenge. People don't understand when I start talking about it. And it's a, it's a significant challenge for me. Yeah. And they may not understand ever in this lifetime. Um, but we still have to live our truth. Right. Yeah, I I think I've stopped trying to explain unless they seem to be really interested and, and keep asking. Other than that, um, I just kind of let it go. Uh, because you, you can't explain it in words that they will find compelling. Right, exactly. And the people who are yep. curious and want to know, they'll come to you yeah. and you sit there for three hours. Oh, tell me more. Right, right. That's right. what I was going to ask you. Is there people that you talk to that are interested? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I have friends. Otherwise, that... Yeah, that you want to, you know, I mean, you can generally you can get a sense if people are interested in, or not, you know. Um, I mean, I do. Just as an example, I mean, this is not about spirituality, but I was talking with these neighbors of mine that I had just met today and I, I, well, what I said, um, we we're talking about one of my neighbors, he does, uh, he does Reiki with horses. Now, if someone told me that I would find that fascinating, you know, and I said, oh yeah, do you know what Reiki is? No. I said, oh, okay. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's basically healing and energy healing. I, you know nothing. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I know not to pursue that because they're just not interested. They don't have that kind of, um, uh, awareness, let's say, or interest. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and you can just feel, gee, that's too bad. <laughs> I go, I feel bad for them that they're not. It's so, interesting or it's so beautiful or what you can get out of it but you know I mean they're living their lives and they're not interested and that's that's cool you move on right there's what we used to call the county agent model where you can talk till you're blue in the face about how you grow corn and nobody listens to you but when they see that your corn is four feet taller than theirs they're going to come and ask you about it <laughs> so people could be coming to us and asking uh you seem happy all the time or gosh you've changed you're so much nicer you're not so bitchy anymore what happened <laughs> <laughs> and then I can tell them oh you have a sense of humor I mean that's not you because you have one but a great sense of humor but yeah maybe someone would get a great sense of humor after they just sort of let a bunch of shit go I don't know anyway <laughs> yeah, I call that living your truth. And I it's something I had to learn. You know, I, I it did not come naturally to me, or maybe it did, but I, I learned not to do it for many, many years. And it wasn't really until and not to do know, what? Wait, I lost to live my truth. Oh, to oh. to feel like I had to do what somebody else was expecting of me, you know, to perform or to do something to keep somebody else happy. And I learned through reconnective healing, or, you know, maybe it was just a coincidence, but, uh, uh, you know, after I got involved with reconnective healing, it's, uh, I was so much easier for me to, number one, know who I was and what I wanted, and um, heal a lot of relationships with my family, 
and and as a result of that it was easier for me to accept who i was and and what my path was and what i was into and uh, things like that and if people didn't like it it's like mm, that's okay you know yeah. <laughs> i mean i'm okay with me now so uh, it, it's uh now, if you're viewing this on YouTube and you don't know what reconnective healing is, I'll put a link in the description so you can go and look at that. But I know exactly what you mean, Barbara, because it 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 is an energy, a mode of energy healing, we'll say, or bringing to balance. But it's also a way of living, which is what I think Reiki is not. Mm -hmm. People go to Reiki and they have it done to them. They are not participants in the same way that you are with reconnective healing and once you learn about it um you begin to change um because you are oh, to balance and, and you're right it's a way of living because you don't have to go to somebody else to have it done i mean you can you can you can do it yourself you can be in it you can live it yeah that's right and and with reiki there are there are some similarities in that area there's some reiki um uh, it's a perspective that for, today i will live without anger i can't remember all of them but they're listed out and they are like the reiki motto or something like that uh, but and i think that but i think you're right you know with reconnective healing it's really more of an awareness of of being and that bring us to that more centered and balanced place and it's one of those things where once you know it it's i guess you can ignore it but it's there's so much benefit to be gained from it that it doesn't to me anyways it doesn't make sense to walk away from it or to ignore it right right <laughs> and and i mean a lot of us talk about our first experience with reconnective healing and i came across this YouTube video of Eric Pearl uh, being interviewed back when he was, he looks like he was about 17, but he was probably <laughs> 35. Um, and about 10 minutes into it, I thought, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I just, I knew. And it, nothing has been the same since then. I think the, the limiting beliefs that we have fall away a lot faster than <laughs> at least I ever anticipated. They come to the surface, mm -hmm. but then they, they do tend to fall away a lot easier. You know, knowing that you are worthy and that you are a part of the divine. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can be a challenge at first when, <laughs> when you learn these things, <laughs> you know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but if it weren't a challenge, we wouldn't be learning anything. So that's right. <laughs> and for all for all the best, uh, well, how can I say this? Sometimes you know we think just by viewing or what we see as our perspective of how others are handling things and how others behave and. Honestly, I, I, I read a lot of biographies and I find that so insightful and so inspiring because what I think I see someone emulating, if you like, uh, is so far from the truth, it's absolutely astonishing. Learning about that and listening to it, well, gives me actually a lot of insight into myself too because it can be so convincing that you're the one who's fooled at what really exists inside me. So if after 67 years, I'm now learning about who I really am, but now I'm really coming to a place of being at home with myself. And it took me 67 years to get here. <laughs> so, you know, it's never too late. If it makes me a, a spiritual neophyte or whatever you want to call it, I really don't care because I value the education that I do receive from everyone and everywhere. And it makes me a, a different kind of human being that maybe I 
used to want to be, but I think it makes me one that's a lot more honest with myself. And I know when I'm not telling the truth because I feel it somewhere in my body and my being, and I really am only harming myself. Well, thanks for that, Barbara. That that's really enlightening. Obviously, Renee, everybody I see Renee. here. I'm Renee, sorry. Everyone I see here has has changed so much since I've known them. Even I can see the effects of the way we're living, and I think we are just about out of time. Um, but wow, thank you so much, all of you, for for being part of this chat today. It is so heartening to know that we're out there for each other and for the world. Yeah, that's one nice thing about us getting together is it's not so lonely. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, now time for our music again. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Thanks, again. Thanks we'll everybody. See you, see you next week. Yeah. yeah. Come back, Colleen. Bye. Great seeing you.